All right, so on the last video, we compared C83 to my square ham file, and we came up with some interesting results, but they were somewhat skewed. So we're gonna basically do the same thing today, but we're gonna do it on a different saw. This time we're gonna do it on something a little more powerful, or I should say a little more torquey. This, this saw has more torque, we'll say that. Um, so, the saw we used last time was built for more of a high revving, screaming kind of build. This one here, it still pulls a lot of RPM, but it has a lot more torque behind it. Um, and we're looking to see what kind of a result we get with a saw that has a different amount of torque. Uh, this is why you don't see me compare saws very often because the chain, as far as the way the chain behaves on a saw with different torque levels, it, it'll it flip flop, it'll flopper, it'll, it'll do all sorts of stuff. And today we're gonna kind of put this to the test and see what happens. So this is a C83 straight out of the box compared to my recent square hand filed. And I set this, uh, the raker up on my square hand file to 20,000th. And after a bit of thinking, I think that's where my mistake is at. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make the cuts, we're gonna compare them, compare their speeds, because I got a feeling the C83 is gonna outrun me on this saw. So let's go ahead and make these cuts, put them together side by side and everything, and then we'll come up with a game plan here to try to get more performance out of our chain. Alrighty, so let's see what happens. Here.
right, so yeah, it, it did flip flop. Um, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Uh, the torque, it had to do with the torque. So sitting at a 20,000th raker, we definitely are catering to the higher RPM side of it. Um, as far as like running a C83 versus this square. Uh, so the higher an RPM build we have, the square is going to outperform the C83, if you know what I mean. Where it, as uh, the, the situation where we have the torque available now, even as I pushed harder. So if you noticed, my cut started out as self-feeding and the square was way smoother on the self-feed. It was, if it, it feels like you're gliding on water, really. Like there isn't a single really bump or ripple or nothing. So on the self-feed, the, 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 the square is way smoother than the C83. Um, there isn't a slightest little bump or ripple or anything where the C83 had a little bit of that. Uh, what else? But if you noticed on when I was applying pressure to the cut and I started pushing hard on the cut, I was pushing harder on, well, I was pushing about the same hardness on both of them, but the C83 was dogging the saw down more versus the square. And the square felt like I kind of hit a wall once I got to a certain point, it just kind of hit a wall and it didn't want to eat any more wood. And I think that is because my raker height is too high. Uh, I think a 20,000th raker in a situation where you, you, you got the torque available is a mis might be a mistake for this kind of a situation. So it does appear as though torque, the torque is going to be a big factor here on how we want to set our chains up. So I think here coming in the future, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a few thousandths off of this chain. Uh, 23 probably. Probably take it to about 23 thousandths and do this test again. Um, and then maybe even 25. We did a 25 test. We did a test already at 25 thousandths, but that chain might have been sharpened. It's, it's got a, a sharper top angle. So... Is it my top angle or is it my my raker height? So I've had a lot of people tell me that 25 to 30, 30 degree top plate should be where I want to go. And I believe the top plate on this hand file is closer to 25. Maybe, I don't think it's quite the 30. So it might be a combination of both that's slowing it down. Um, it might need a, a 30 degree top plate for certain, I think, and I think a deeper raker, both. I'm thinking a 23 thousandth raker and a 20 or a 30 degree top plate. Um, that's, that's the best solution I can come up with right now. Uh, I can tell you it does, it does, it, whenever I cut, it just feels like I hit a wall when I start pushing. And it just kind of gets to a point and it just stops eating more wood or anything. You know what I mean? Uh, so there's something going on there. You know what I mean? And I think it's a combination of top plate and raker. But I think first we're going to go for the raker uh, and see what happens. Because our top plate, it might be better. Because uh, this chain is not running as sharp of a top plate as that last chain. So we might end up actually going back to the 25,000th raker because I'm not running my top plate as steep. So I think the next testing, we're gonna be looking at doing a deeper raker. We'll probably go to 23,000, see how that does, and then go to a 25, you know? So we'll probably go ahead and make two raker adjustments next time around. But yeah, very interesting results as, you know, torque increases. The, the the chain's performance uh, on the saw will change, and which is why you don't see me doing saw comparison videos, really. I've been in the situation enough times that I've kind of learned that if you try to run the same chain on multiple saws at different performance levels, uh, you got to make sure you do it in a manner where just it's not just the RPM involved, 
but you have you have to you have to apply pressure um, of some sort. So let's say let's say you do a self feeding test. You're 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 looking at like you're looking to, you're basically doing a chain video really. So whenever you do a self feed test or of a chain on a saw. So like say say we got three saws we want to compare, and we stick the same chain and bar on all three saws, and we do it all on a self feed test. So it's not really a test of the saw's performance. We're testing the performance of the chain of different saws at different performance levels. And you can kind of skew your results by doing that. So what you got to do is you got to do like a cell feed test. And then you have to come back through and be like, okay, this saw made the cut at 12,000 RPM. Now I'm going to apply enough pressure to make the saw cut at 10,000 RPM and do the same cut. And then the next saw, let's say it cut at 11.5 during the self feed test. Let's do enough pressure to drop it 2000 RPM and make another cut and see what happens. And you're probably gonna start seeing results change as you start applying the torque of the build more and more and more. And you also gotta be careful what chain you run. You gotta make be, you know I mean? There, you got to make sure you're running a known chain that performs well, um, like C83. C83 is the best out-of-the-box stuff you're, you're going to get. I mean, I got a whole roll of it for a reason. You know what I mean? Uh, once I'm done with the factory grind, though, it's up to me. So that's kind of why I am working on developing my sharpening skills. Uh, you know what I mean? There's a lot of testing behind it. And you might think you're doing great, but until you grab something like C83 and you start testing like this and comparing and everything, I don't care how how you think it feels through the wood, the the results in the end are might might be way different to what you really think. So you gotta be careful of what what you do or what you're you know what I mean? You gotta keep be uh you just got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And in the end, you end up learning a lot about your chains and your sharpening and everything. And that's kind of what I'm doing, you know? Um, so with this saw, like I've tested two square chains. And I'm I, actually, that other square chain that I did up might actually outperform this one here on this saw. So it's like the the, the chain itself might be the issue here because it's not hungry enough. I did that other chain before and it was hungrier, but it was too hungry for the saw. So after I did this one, this other one here, we were w able to easily outperform it. And here, you know, <clears throat> and now on this saw here, the whole, our results might flip flop because of, you know, our situation. So I think uh, we're going to have to do it, I think. So, so yeah, here coming up, uh, we're going to be doing some more testing and figure out where I went wrong on this square. And I'm suspicious it's our raker height. I think we need to get deeper. Probably, we might just go for 25,000 right out of the gate. But we'll see. We might do the 23, then 25. Um it, it's a combination of all your angles put together. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're pretty good and hungry on the tooth. I think before I was running too steep on the top plate with the 25,000th raker. And here I'm not running as steep on the top plate, but I got a 20,000th raker. And it's, it, it, it cuts like butter. Like it's, it's gliding on air, you know? And I think... I like I like the way it's how smooth it is, I do, but I think that uh, taking it to a little deeper raker should help improve the performance of the chain, ultimately. So we'll see how this progresses. You know what I mean? Uh, quite interesting here on this this little test. You know, um, definitely a learning curve. So we'll catch you on the next one later.